If you have a house full of dumb devices like curtains, which you have to pull to close or open like some sort of monkey, I pity you. But never fear, because you too can have a little smart robot that will close and open the curtains for you. Meet the SwitchBot Curtain. And its more well-known cousin for these physical switch things, the SwitchBot Bot. Switch. Uh, bot. Original. That's right. You don't even need to bother pressing buttons now either. In fact, you don't even really need to get out of bed. I'm James Bruce, you're watching MUO Reviews, makeuseof.com, and please join me today as I check out the SwitchBot ecosystem, but mostly focus on the newest product uh, in the SwitchBot line, the SwitchBot Curtain. All right, so first up, a quick word of warning. You really do have to choose carefully. SwitchBot have considered every type of curtain out there, and they have four or five different SKUs uh, to suit most curtain types. Rods, U-rails, both EU and US style, I-rails, and they've actually just launched a new Rod 2 type, which we'll talk more about later. So ensuring you've selected the right type and that your particular system is compatible is a pretty crucial step. So do read the product page very carefully. Um, but chances are one of them will work for you. For this review, we tested a few of the SwitchBot curtain rod and rod two types. Now, all of my curtain rods are at the lowest end of the supported diameter range of 15 to 40 millimeters. Ours is about 18 millimeters. But unless your curtain rods are like as thick as a log, you should be okay. Now, within the rod type, there are in fact four different curtain subtypes, all of which are covered by this. Um, and these include ring top, like these, where you have a ring on, on the top of your curtains, a separate wooden or metal ring. Grommet, like these, uh, where the ring is built into the curtain. Tab top, like these, which are a material piece at the top of your curtain uh, that just act like rings. And back tab, which I don't have an example of, but which is basically a tab top, but on the back rather than uh, top. So the ring top and grommet types are the easiest of installations, requiring no more than simply attaching the main SwitchBot curtain uh, unit itself to the curtain rail. That's it, done. Tab top and back tab curtains are a little bit more complicated and they require either some plastic clips or strips to be attached, which are also included in the box. One more complication, if like me you have a double curtain, well then you can either buy two SwitchBot curtains, one for uh, controlling each side, of course, uh, or you can connect both of them together using a clip or sewing them together and then remove any block in the middle. In our bedroom, this just wasn't possible because the center has a wall fixing on it and it's pretty long, so I needed two SwitchBots for a single window. Thankfully, SwitchBot has bulk buy discounts, so if you buy two at once, it's $160 rather than 99, but still. For our first test, I tried a basic ring top type of curtain, uh, and the installation was really simple. For this, I used the original rod type uh, switch bot. You need to push the top clip onto the bottom, and this should be a bit tighter than you think uh, is okay in order to properly grip the rod. If it hangs loosely, the motor won't actually move, of course. So that install was really easy, and we'll get onto performance and testing later. For now, I just want to demo installing it on two other types of curtain first. So SwitchBot also sent me some of their newer Rod 2 curtain devices. Now these are functionally identical to the original Rod 1. It wasn't actually called Rod 1, it was called Rod. But the design is slightly different in that they will better handle uh, extendable curtain rods, while the original Rod could often have problems getting over that sort of change in thickness where the extendable bit comes out. So for my next test, I went over to the living room and sure enough, I have an extendable rod there this time with tab top curtains. And I even went ahead and pulled out the middle support fixing, which wasn't really needed anyway. They're lightweight curtains. So this really gave me a chance to test how powerful and effective it could be when combined with two sets of curtains together. So shipping with these four clips, you add these to the ring tabs surrounding the bot to help it glide more easily. Two should be placed opposing each other, and then you place the rest in line with the second one. Then you go ahead and install the SwitchBot Curtain 2. Now, it's a little more tricky than the original because it ships in two halves, which you then have to click together. But honestly, it's still trivial. So you pull this part up, push it on, and then do the same here, and then 
clip the two together. Now I tried two other rooms as well. In our guest room we have another extendable rod, this time with grommet type curtains. And the rod here had a really significant diameter change I found for the extension part. And the switch bot did admittedly struggle. There's a couple of millimeters difference in fact between the small and large parts of the rod so that really presented a problem. For these sort of extreme diameter changes SwitchBot actually supply a metal plate inside the pack uh, with a piece of tape that you can sort of wrap around it and that will smooth out the transition. When I added that it definitely helped but at that point I found out that these grommet type curtains that I have are really not suitable for being joined up mainly because as you pull them along they create far too much tension that the SwitchBot has to battle against and that just didn't work for me. I did try fitting the chain that's supplied in the SwitchBot pack too but that didn't seem to match the grommet spacing on my pair of curtains. So if you want to use SwitchBot with these type of curtains they would really need to be either very short runs or to use two SwitchBots together but it did handle uh, as I say the difference in the extendable curtain rod bit admirably after using the included metal plate. Finally I headed upstairs to try in my kids bedroom. This uses the same type of extendable curtain rod as the guest room with a very large diameter change again but thankfully it has ring top curtains so I was expecting less issues here. I did however still need to use that sticky metal plate to even out the diameter change but after that everything worked out fine. So if you're wondering whether you should buy rod one or two then know that both will actually be available simultaneously but moving forward the original rod design will be phased out once the stock is depleted. If you don't have an extendable curtain pole it really doesn't matter which one you buy so if you can find a deal on the original rod one then I'd recommend going for that but if you do have an extendable curtain rod uh, then it's worth waiting until the rod tube design becomes widely available in your area. Okay so on to software. No matter which style of curtain you've got, after downloading the SwitchBot app and creating an account, adding devices is unexpectedly simple. It all runs over Bluetooth, so there's no need to connect it to an ad hoc Wi-Fi network or try to remember your own Wi-Fi password to transmit over and then wait for it to draw. Oh, so tiring. It's right there immediately in the app. Select the new device, which is automatically detected, and then just go ahead and configure it. For the SwitchBot curtains this means naming them uh, and choosing what type of curtain it was installed on. I assume this measures out different power levels perhaps. Since I use a double curtain style in the bedroom here the SwitchBot also demanded that I set up another device right away uh, before I could calibrate anything and then that becomes a secondary device to the main curtain so you don't end up having to control each one individually you just get one curtain set in your devices list which does both. After that it was on to calibration which was a little more frustrating the first time I did it but you get used to it. It involves starting and stopping the motors via three small on-screen buttons to tell it where the start and end of your curtain run is. If you don't get your timing exactly right and you don't press that stop button in time you let the motor overrun just a little so it's pushing into somewhere it can't go then it'll never be able to complete an open or close action and you'll have to redo the calibration process. So I initially needed to repeat the calibration a couple of times uh, but I got there eventually and sort of learnt how to time it better. I'll also note it doesn't matter if your curtain is off centre as ours is here with say more rod on one side. Both sides will calibrate independently and when you press open they both operate to their correct distances as it were. Alright so how about performance? How do they actually work in practice? In terms of Bluetooth range, although these are Bluetooth only out of the box, I've got to say I was really impressed with the range of the Bluetooth. And I suspect this is because they don't actually need much data compared to say an audio stream for headphones, which will typically cut out at 5-10 meters in open air. These I found were comfortable being controlled from either a room directly above or sort of halfway down the corridor. And that's actually really impressive in my house where it's both long and has some very thick internal stone walls. So very impressed with the range and if you have a more typical house you might actually be able to control everything from anywhere or at least one central location. I also found the app to be very responsive. Sometimes with smart devices it can take a while to come alive in the apps or respond with their status. Not so with this, uh, it took only a second or two for the devices to be visible and responsive over Bluetooth which is great. Slightly different story once I put it into cloud mode with the hub 
but more on that later. Okay, so let's talk about battery life and the solar power add-on. So after a couple of weeks of scheduled morning open and evening closing, the SwitchBot curtains were left with 85, 90% battery life. That works out to at least three months, probably more like six months before you actually need to recharge them. Um, and that would be, again, typical once a day open and close actions. Clearly that's not ideal. I mean, there's enough things in our life to charge without having to think about the curtains, which is why SwitchBot also sells a small solar panel to keep them topped up by the sun. This is really easy to fit, it just clips on the back. But I hear you cry, what if my SwitchBot isn't in the sun because the curtain sits quite high? No worries, you simply attach the Velcro pads to your curtain and then pull off the back of the solar panel to reveal a short 50 centimeter or so USB cable actually built into it. It's a very clever design and you can then sit that solar panel anywhere on your curtain, so let it hang out, down a bit and the SwitchBot should never need charging, at least not for me. They're gonna be closed in summer, which should give it a 100% charge to last through winter. It will require a few hours of full sun though, so if you have low light levels anyway, sort of shaded by your neighbors or something, then that probably won't work for you and you will have to put up with recharging it. Although, like I say, three months to six months, it's not a huge deal. Okay, let's talk about smart features. So out of the box, the SwitchBot curtains work on Bluetooth and only Bluetooth which means your phone needs to be in proximity of the devices you want to control with one exception, scheduling. You can save a schedule to the SwitchBot curtain devices themselves, even if you don't buy an optional hub. So for us in the bedroom, this is the primary use case really. I'm mainly concerned with energy conservation rather than blocking out the light or anything. So with the SwitchBot curtains built in memory, you can do that without the need for a hub. You just set it in the configuration and it saves to the device itself. And this doesn't need uh, any extra automation systems. You might also be wondering, what about pulling them closed? Can you still do that? Yes, it has what's called an assist mode. So even if you wanna override your schedule and close them early, you can sort of nudge one of the curtains a little and it'll take over. It'll finish the job for you. And then it will understand that you've already opened or closed them. So it's not like a lot of smart home stuff where you basically lose manual control, like smart bulbs, you can no longer use the switch. With these, you do still mean maintain that ability to pull them shut in an even lazier way, which is better. The first optional extra you can buy for these is a remote control. Rather than set up a schedule, perhaps you wanna wake up at different times each day and you wanna open them as soon as you open your eyes rather than being awoken by them. That's doable too. It's an optional purchase called, sure enough, the SwitchBot Remote. Now this isn't just for curtains, it's a generic part of the SwitchBot ecosystem, so it can pair with any of their products. But in this case, I've paired it with my living room curtains, which will primarily be used when I want to game or watch a movie on the projector. So it's not on a set schedule. Again, setup is simple, pair it in the app, assign a button to a device that's within reach. And again, they run on Bluetooth, so it needs to be sort of within 10 meters range. You can't put it on your keychain and operate it from anywhere in the world. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but anyway. I found the remote to be the most disappointing part of the SwitchBot offering, however, because it's pretty limited. Each button can only do one action per curtain device. Now, if you have one rod curtain or one of the SwitchBot curtains, uh, that means you can toggle it open or closed with one button. But if you have a pair of curtain devices, uh, then one button is needed to open and the other is to close. So basically you end up with one remote per curtain set. I really would have liked to see more actions per remote. If you compare to the flick buttons, for instance, you can set them up to operate something with one press, two presses, three presses, long press, etc. All of which can be a distinct action to do all sorts of things within your smart home. Okay, so how about beyond Bluetooth? If you want to add smart control, voice assistance, etc., you'll need a hub. And here's where we start to go deeper down the rabbit hole because the SwitchBot empire is vast and complex, so bear with me. By adding a hub, you immediately get Wi-Fi control of any products it's paired with and in range of. Again, this still uses Bluetooth to communicate with though, so the devices do need to be in the same room uh, as your hub, pretty much. The SwitchBot hub adds smart assistant functionality to your SwitchBot devices. Whether that's curtains or switch bot push buttons, you'll need a hub for any smarter features that you want to use. But in addition to adding cloud control to your otherwise Bluetooth only switch bot products, the mini hub also has an IR emitter built in. 
and it can learn any remote control that you own. Not RF though. So as a quick guideline, if your remote control has a little LED at the end of it, it's likely infrared. If it doesn't, if it mentions something like gigahertz or megahertz, anywhere on the back, it's probably RF or radio frequency, which the hub can't control. If it's IR, then it can be controlled with this. And basically any type of remote will work. If it's not in their database, you can just program and learn any buttons that you need. This is a very cool feature. It's certainly not the first time we've seen that. Um, there's been IR blasters on the market for a while, but having it within that SwitchBot ecosystem on a hub that you might be buying anyway, just to open up cloud control of the SwitchBot products, that opens up a lot of automation possibilities. So on top of that, the hub also adds the ability to create scenes, which are sets of actions that you can perform sequentially with one command. So as an example, I've got the hub located in my cinema and gaming room. I set a scene up called Big Screen, and what that does is to close the curtains using the SwitchBot uh, curtain rod type. Then with the IR Blaster functionality, it turns on my AV receiver and it turns on the projector. And finally, I added a SwitchBot bot uh, button presser to my PC so it can momentarily press the power button to turn that on. Then there's another scene to turn everything off, of course, and open up the curtains again. And it also presses the PC button again for a soft shutdown. Of course, there are limitations to this. IR blasters are dumb automations in that Hub Mini doesn't know if something is powered on or off. And if your remote only has a power button, then it can inadvertently turn it on again uh, if you, say, accidentally turned it off manually. Same with a momentary switch bot. It doesn't actually know if my PC is on or not. So if I did shut it down from the start menu, for instance, the scene I have programmed to shut down would then instead turn it back on again. And you can get out of sync if you're not careful. Of course, as long as you stick to scene uses only, uh, you shouldn't have an issue. One small frustration I had was with the SwitchBot devices with cloud control added. They're no longer visible over Bluetooth because essentially they become paired with the hub rather than your phone. So I found that when my Wi-Fi was spotty or Starlink was down, I couldn't see anything in my account really because it had all been added to cloud control. And that was a bit disconcerting. I had to wait for the internet to come back on before I could regain control of those devices. I'll also note that the SwitchBot button switcher can also be used for on-off rocker switches that need to be pushed back the other way again, which I thought was pretty clever. It comes with some sticky pads and a nylon loop, which will actually pull the switch back up rather than trying to push the other side, it just pulls it. So in my opinion, this really hammers home the point that the SwitchBot ecosystem is remarkably adaptive. You can add smart features to basically any kind of dumb device and then automate everything. SwitchBot really plugs a gap in the whole home automation system for things that you wouldn't normally be able to integrate. And to be honest, that's one of the main reasons I mostly gave up on Smart Home Kit a few years ago, because it's so disparate. In terms of smart assistants, the Hub Mini works great with Alexa or Google Home out of the box, but the most effective I found was to export an entire SwitchBot scene uh, to a Siri shortcut. So I can just say, Hey Siri, it's movie night. Okay, Doug. That's on. Curtains are closing. Amplifiers on. Computer's booting up. And we should see... Projector takes a while. And there we go, there's desktop. I did also try linking it up to Google Home where you then have individual item control and your scenes are automatically available with whatever you named them, but it's not obvious. So make sure you, you name them correctly because you can't customize it later, uh, unlike Siri shortcuts, for instance. Google Home support didn't quite work for my use case and it felt a bit clunky, though frankly, that's more Google's fault than SwitchBot. So then we get on to the big question, is it worth it? Where I'm from, curtains tend to be doubled up, one either side of a window, which means of course that for a single window, you would likely need two sets of switch bots uh, at $160 total, along with a solar panel for each one if you didn't want to faff around with charging them. So that's another $40 on top of that. 
And then of course you'd probably want a smart home hub for automation, perhaps the remote control too. And at that point you're in for $250 to control one room's worth of curtain. I don't know about you, but that seems like a lot to me. Now granted, the Hub Mini also adds infrared blaster control and you might be able to get away with less hubs if you put one in the corridor outside the room. So maybe it ends up more like $200 per room, but that's still a lot at a time when many of us are having to make cutbacks just to afford, you know, heating the house. That's not to say the hardware isn't worth it. It is, it's a very impressive and adaptable bit of kit. What I was most impressed with is the overall dynamic and adaptable nature of the SwitchBot ecosystem, being able to work with so many different use cases. For the curtain product, for instance, okay, extendable rods are not perfect if they have too much of a massive change, but you might be able to work around it with the metal plate they include. Gromit curtains it also struggled with, for my case at least, but other tab top, etc. worked fine. And to be honest, the curtain it did struggle with, I actually struggle with too when closing them by hand. That's why they're in the guest room because no one ever uses it. Generally, if you can close the curtains easily by hand, then the SwitchBot curtain isn't gonna have an issue either. Costs aside, looking at the bigger picture, SwitchBot seems to handle most dumb product types really well. The original SwitchBot uh, switcher, for instance, being able to operate both on and off buttons or something needing a single momentary or even long press because you can change how long it pushes down for, that's genius. And the original SwitchBot switches at $30 are pretty good value for money too. So if you're thinking about integrating all of this, I think it saves you the hassle of fitting all new light bulbs or different switches and being able to make unusual things like a dumb coffee machine smart is really cool. The most powerful aspect I thought was when I had everything integrated with the Mini Hub 2. The curtains, the projector, the PC, etc. and could assign a whole load of actions to a Siri shortcut. That turns a lot of prep and button presses for dumb devices that I normally do once a week for movie night into a single automation done by voice. So it means that we can start watching a movie five, ten minutes earlier. That sort of time saving might seem small, but it really adds up in the long run and being able to nail down those regular routines you have is really uh, the sort of home automation dream. So I'm very pleased with how that worked out. Honestly, I wasn't expecting to enjoy the SwitchBot products as much as I have. The Switch, the original SwitchBot for instance, has been on our radar for years, but I've turned down reviews in the past because a smart button presser really, come on, it just sounds silly. That's the height of laziness, right? But actually having now given it a chance, I'm really sold on the idea, especially when combined with a Hub Mini IR Blaster and being able to automate so much stuff that wouldn't normally be uh, possible. All right, thank you for watching this in-depth look at the SwitchBot Curtain products and the wider SwitchBot ecosystem in general. I hope it helped you, maybe gave you some ideas of what you could automate. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up in the comments and I'll see if I can answer them. Otherwise, do please hit like and consider subscribing for more reviews, gadget giveaways, and more from all of us over at makeyourself.com.